Please join me as we wrap up Project Beige Box E30, our beloved E30 325i. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for the final installment of Project Beige Box E30. And that's our 1990 325i. So, man, this is always a sad time, right? Because it's the finale of a long running project. And it has been a long running project. I'd say 40 to 50 hours of my life long running. But anyway. This has been a fantastic opportunity and a fantastic car. It rolled into the Auto Obsessive Garage looking a little uh, less than the Ultimate Driving Machine should, but you know, a combination of a lot of mechanicals catching up on you know deferred maintenance, our specialty here in the shop, and doing some cosmetic work. We got this BMW 325i right where it should be, and it is a very sweet ride. So. Uh, guys, let's uh, let's take a look back. Let's see all the work we put into this thing and see what the final product looks like. With no further ado, here is the finale of Project Beige Box E30. And here we go. We've got a 1990 BMW 325i in the auto obsessive garage. Look how distinctive that front end is. Ah. Yeah, she's a little bit roughed up down there on the lower right, as you can see, but we'll get that taken care of. Also, There's your inline six, super accessible. Everything's pretty clean under here. We've had to touch up a couple things. I'm gonna be tearing it all apart because I'm doing every seal. We have records on this car. It was well taken care of by the uh, one owner. So the timing belt was done, but it was done like 15 years ago or something to that effect. So it's not there on mileage, but there on time. So. I always play it safe. I'm going to pull it out, new water pump, replace all the gaskets, valve cover. I might take that out and give it a nice coat of uh, aluminum paint just to make it look clean, keep it looking stock, keep it looking fresh, and go over everything else in here, replace any oil seals. It's going to be an operation, but oh, such a lovely car. Why not? Washer fluid light was also illuminated. We resolved that by adding some washer fluid because we are brilliant mechanics. Just kidding. But that's been resolved. We have brake light, which I've already sourced, is the third brake light. The bulb needs to be replaced. And then we have coolant, which is a scary light to see. Are we leaking coolant? Why are we low? And the reason being is a mouse chewed through one of the wires at some point. So that's obviously causing that light to illuminate. So let's peek under the hood and I'll show you exactly what it is. This wire is a lot rougher than I thought. I'm actually gonna make my cut up here. It's just a T-wire setup. So I'm gonna use some donor wires from another project because I don't trust the integrity of this wire anymore. You guys, why the gauge cluster was removed on this car is we were having issues. The temp gauge would periodically go out, the speedometer would sometimes go on and off. So there's a certified rebuilder that everyone uses in the E30 community. So we have removed the gauge cluster uh, and sent that off. So I think I do have a video of that. So I might show that for those people that want to, but it is not a fun operation. Uh, aftermarket radio. So we might source the original stereo system for this car. I think that's well worth it to do that. Actually, there's some paint coming off, as you can see, pretty standard because these were painted aluminum wheels. Uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and refinish those. That's a huge project, but especially with this many spokes and this design, but boy, let's just go for it. Right, get some new center caps, get this wheel painted and really make it look good. <laughs> How much coolant can an engine hold? All 
right, there's our three bolts. There we have it, not too crusty guys. Here's the old water pump. And you wanna use your redone, shined up bolts to secure it. I always like to put the top one in first. At least get something to hold her in place. Okay, everything's tight. We're gonna go ahead and send all that home with the correct torque specs, one, two, three. And there we go, we have our brand new water pump installed. Now it's time for us to remove the tensioner pulley so we'll have slack on our belt and are able to remove it at that time. It's a little snug down there but looking pretty good. Now what I like to do is rotate the engine two to three times, go back to top dead center, and that should take all the slack out of the belt. Grab what you can with a 22 millimeter socket. Make sure the vehicle is in neutral for this part. This is really important. And we're gonna go ahead and start turning the engine at this time. The big thing is gonna be checking those timing marks again once you rotate the engine a few times and make sure your lines are good and we are great at this time. We're gonna go ahead and tighten our tensioner in place, the top bolt and the bottom bolt. Remember this bottom bolt, you do have to let go just a little bit loose so this can pivot forward and back. So let's go ahead and tighten both those down at this time. So replacing all the major coolant lines is pretty obvious to do on this kind of a job. These look like the originals. Uh, you can see there's lots of crud built up inside of them. You can see swelling, I mean right there, very unnatural swelling. Uh, usually around where the hose clamps are and some discoloration, some kind of dry rot going on. This is saving yourself a headache. This is the kind of stuff that will get you stranded. So go ahead, swap these out. It isn't that big of a price thing. You've already got to pull everything off anyway, so make sure you're doing that. So we got a fresh one right here, as you can see. So I'm seeing a lot of wear on the cap, pretty worn down, and then the rotor itself is super rough. Could be part of the reason the car was idling kind of rough. So not a bad time while we're in there before we buckle it all back up to swap that out. Okay, filter looks pretty clean on this side. Oh. Yeah, that's a bad sign. There were some mice living under the hood in this vehicle and, yep, all nuts and stuff in there. Great. Oh, I am gonna thoroughly clean this out. All right, let's see what's living under here. Okay, we're not looking too old. A little crusty in there, but. You cannot judge a thermostat just by looking at it, I can tell you that much. A little dirty. Okay, well let's clean this up. Clean this mating surface in here where the ring goes and we'll put our new unit on. 